the GRIP acronym stands for Genesis and Rapid Intensification Processes, and it basically tells you what we're after. We're, we're trying to, to get measurements uh, related to the formation of hurricanes and also those cases where they rapidly intensify into major hurricanes. Although we know a lot more and we do a lot better in forecasting the track of hurricanes and tropical cyclones, we don't do a very good job at forecasting the intensity changes. The basic reason that we don't do a better job is the lack of fundamental understanding of the physical processes in storms that sometimes uh, in, cause a storm to intensify very quickly, uh, like go from a Category 1 to Category 4 in, in 24 hours, uh, or uh, fail to do so. And uh, that's supremely important uh, information to get to the public, and we hope to learn a lot more so that we can do a better job of that in the future. I mean, sometimes you, uh, you'll, you'll hear this genesis problem as sort of the holy grail of tropical meteorology. You, know, you get numerous convective systems uh, in the tropics that look promising, and yet only a small percentage ever develop into hurricanes. And we still don't fully understand what distinguishes those that do develop into hurricanes and those that don't. And, and that's why we often think that this is really one of the big questions that we have to go after. The kinds of processes we're interested in are, uh, for example, how uh, Saharan dust plays a role in determining whether a storm develops or not. There's controversy that dust coming from the African continent uh, inhibits the development of storms. So we hope to at least answer some of these questions. It's very difficult because we need really comprehensive measurements and we hope to get some of those during this mission. This mission is different than previous ones. Uh, partly in terms of the aircraft that we're bringing to the field. In, in GRIP, uh, NASA will have three aircraft, the DC-8, Global Hawk, and the WB-57 aircraft. We've had multiple aircraft before in coordination with other agencies before, uh, and one of those aircraft, the Global Hawk, an unmanned aircraft, has the ability to, to stay out for very long periods of time. Well, we're all very excited about what we might be able to learn from the Global Hawk for so many reasons. Probably the most important reason is that the Global Hawk, because of its endurance, will be able to be positioned over and around the storm for a very long period of time uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially up to 18 or 20 hours at a time. Uh, we've never been able to do anything like that before. In addition to that, uh, we have partner agencies, NOAA and National Science Foundation, that will provide their aircraft. And so in total, we'll have the order of seven aircraft flying around hurricanes. Well, one of the advantages of having all of us working together is that we'll be able to, con to obtain more continuous data sets of what's happening in the storm. And this will give us a much better picture of what's really happening, how, how the storms are evolving and developing. And, and hopefully, we'll gain a much better understanding of, of what's going on inside these hurricanes and a, and a better capability for forecasting uh, intensity changes and, and development of these storms. Well, Hurricane Earl uh, was extremely well behaved for this program. Uh, Hurricane Earl intensified uh, in a location that that a number of the agencies uh, collaborating with NASA as well as NASA were able to get into the storm and observe it right from the time it first became a hurricane through its intensification up to a category four and then uh, the last flight when it was weakening back from four to two. And uh, so we were able to observe all stages of the hurricane uh, intensity change from uh, that we really wanted to do. And so we are looking forward to looking at those data and, uh, and learning a whole lot uh, that we didn't know before about uh, uh, the influences that caused both the intensification and the weakening. Yeah, I think one of the big reasons why we're doing it now is that we have some very good instruments, state-of-the-art instruments that have become available. I consider two of the instruments on the Global Hawk are uh, satellite quality. Uh, one of them is the, uh, the HIRAP, which is a dual frequency scanning radar that we hope will teach us a lot about not just the 
radar and storm structure and the precipitation structure, but also give us a very detailed vertical profile of the winds in the storm. And the Hamster instrument is a passive microwave radi radiometer that can tell us a lot of detail about the nature of the storm beneath the clouds. It's very important that we be able to look beneath the cloud tops and see uh, what's going on uh, in all altitudes of the storm. Most of our instruments are trying to primarily measure meteorological parameters, temperature profiles, moisture profiles, precipitation, uh, surface wind velocity, uh, what is the wind field around uh, the storm. Uh, I think that's a very valuable and very new measurement. We never had that before. If we can better predict the details of the winds when the hurricane comes ashore, then uh, we can use that data to better predict the storm surge. And of course, much of the hurricane damage that occurs is due to the storm surge, the water that's brought in by the hurricane, the flooding that occurs, for example, uh, in New Orleans when Katrina came ashore. Being able to better predict the storm surge requires better wind fields, and better wind field prediction, of course, requires better wind field measurements. And so we certainly hope to be able to do that with some of these new instruments that we've developed. The scientists, I think they're very excited. They're learning uh, some of the things that they had ne never seen before. We are, for the first time, observing all phases of uh, uh, the hurricane development, uh, rapid intensification and then uh, de-intensification. So I don't think we've seen that before. With any improvement in forecasting that may result from this, and we're, we're looking at a few years down the line with as that research comes out, uh, but, but any improvements that come out always have the potential of saving lives, saving money in terms of reducing the areas of, uh, that are worn for hurricanes and particularly evacuations, which are very costly. Uh, it, it better allows you to get emergency response teams into areas right after a storm because they'll know better where to go. And it's going to be very exciting to see what sort of data comes out of this and the research that comes out of this as well. It really offers some great opportunities for advancing our understanding of storm formation and intensification.